Right, so now we're going to talk about input validation. And it's important to validate input every single time that you could get input from a user, whether that's for a website or for a mobile app or for a console application. Because there are two rules, two laws in the world of programming. One is Moore's Law and the other is don't trust programs and people with your software. There are people who will intentionally try to hack a program, break a program, and intentionally try to maliciously do things. So you want to program your application in such a way as to be battle-hardened and ready for those attacks. But it's not just that. It's also to be able to make sure that the program will run and be able to handle things that were unexpected, at least from the program standpoint. And so here we have a menu that's wrapped in a while loop. And in this while loop, I am presenting to the user options one, two, three, and four, and then the fifth one being exit. And then I'm prompting the user for a selection with a console.read line, and I'm also trimming it so that we don't have, if the user decides to put extra spaces on the front end and back end of their selection, it's not going to break the program. And then I'm testing the value. So if what the user put in matches option one, option two, option three, or option four. By the way, this means or. An and operator would be two ampersands. So that's and. This is equal to, and this is or. So if it's this one, or 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 I should say this one, then go ahead and clear the console and break out of the loop, which ends the program. Otherwise, continue, which is just going to continue down and continue to test. And here, we're going to try to take that input and turn it into an integer. So if it can't turn this into an integer, then we're going to print to the screen that there was an error and please try again. Or if what the user provided was outside of the bounds of what was expected, meaning if it was less than 1 or greater than 5. So let's see this in operation. So at this point, let's put in all caps, option one. Well, it ran through. In fact, why don't we All right, so now the program, if it's successful, will run until the user presses a key to continue. All right, so now let's give this a try. success. But what about if the user provides negative 110? There is an error. How about zero? There is an error. How about six? There is an error. How about five? Success. And what about Option four, success. So this is how you validate user input, whether it is in a loop or not. Some other options for validation, more specifically when you're validating for types. So here we're asking for a string. And we just want to make sure that, well, it's a string. Well, guess what? Automatically, anything that comes from readline has to be a string. So we don't have to validate for that. But what if we say we want an integer? Well, an integer we most definitely need to validate. And make sure that the user put in a value that would evaluate to an integer. So here we say, please enter an integer. And then we're taking that value and putting it into input. And then we are going to try and convert or try parse the input value out as an integer. And if it cannot do it, it'll say, hey, that wasn't an integer. Otherwise, it'll say that was an integer. So let's try this out. Please enter an integer. Let's say no, that was not an integer. Now let's do 234. 
that was an integer. And we can do the same thing for double. If we see here, the code is exactly the same except for the term here, double, has changed, as well as right here, double. So it's double.triparse out, and then I just needed to make sure the output variable was also of a type double. So if we see here, the output variables are int, double, decimal, float, and boolean. But the syntax is exactly the same as it was up above for integer. So let's see this. So let's enter a double. That was a double. Now let's see if when I enter an integer, is that also? That was a double. So what would not be a double? Well, a string is not a double. And float is exactly the same way. We don't need to run it, but just so that you can see that I have a float variable. I did float.triparse. I'm taking an input from the console, and then depending on whether or not this evaluates, it will either be it was a float or it wasn't a float. The same for decimal. The only difference is the word decimal and that the output value is of type decimal. And boolean, exactly the same. of type boolean out as a boolean. So let's enter a boolean value. If we say yes, that's not a boolean value. If we say false, that is a boolean value. Boolean must be true or false. And then finally, some advanced tests on ranges. Something we've already kind of discussed, but this time it's a little more concise. So please enter a number between 1 and 10. The user will input the value, and then if the input value cannot be converted to an integer, then we'll output to the screen, hey, that wasn't an integer. Otherwise, it'll continue along. And if the input value is less than 0, or the input value is greater than 10, then you entered a value that was outside of the expected range. So let's try this out. Let's do yes. That was not an integer. Let's enter negative 100. You entered a value that was outside the expected range. This time, Let's put in a value that's expected. And there, we did not get an error, so it worked. 